Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today. Today, we gather in commemoration of the tragic events that unfolded on the morning of September 11, 2001. That is the day our world changed forever. And as the flag in the back so aptly says, we will never forget. 23 years ago, more than two decades, but ever present in our minds and our hearts, regardless of the days and the months and the years that pass us by. Today, we remember and we pay our respects. We come together to honor the memory of the nearly 3,000 innocent lives lost, to reflect upon the heroism displayed by first responders, and to reaffirm our commitment to unity, resilience, and peace. As we commence this program, let us remember the importance of compassion and unity in the face of adversity. Let us honor the memory of those who perished by dedicating ourselves to building a better, more peaceful world for future generations. Today, we stand in solidarity as a nation and as a community. I would like to invite Chairman Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones to share a few words. She will be followed by the presentation of colors and the Pledge of Allegiance by the Douglas County High School Junior ROTC and the national anthem sung by Jada Coleman and Jasmine Coleman. Good morning, Douglas County. Thank you so much, Yvette. Uh, good morning, Douglas County again, and thank you for joining us on this day of commemoration. Patriots Day is a national observance that honors the memory of those who were killed in the September 11th attacks. It's also a day of, for us to honor our first responders and military who placed their lives on the line for each of us and every one of us every single day. Douglas County, I stand here with gratitude for your presence here today. Each year you show up for this momentous yet solemn occasion, not only in commemoration of those lives lost, but in unwavering support of our local heroes who dedicate their lives to ensuring our community's safety. These are the men and women who are on the first line of communication and defense in an emergency. Our E911 operators, our firefighters, and deputies and police officers. They are the ones who run toward danger in an effort to safeguard us from it. We thank you. We appreciate you. We honor you. We honor your bravery, your fortitude, and your tenacity. We honor your commitment to service and to this community. Today, let us stand united in remembrance of those who paid the ultimate price on this fatal, fateful day. Let us stand united in strength and resilience in the face of unspeakable tragedy. Let us stand in gratitude for those who serve on the front lines to protect us. Let us stand as one Douglas, forward together, grounded in faith and fueled by hope for better days ahead. Thank you. Stripes and bright stars through the bed. 
Let me now on welcoming Chief Dr. Miles Allen to the podium. We thank you, Chief Allen, as you make your way here for your leadership and the dedicated service of our local responders who put their lives on the line each and every single day for our benefit. Chief Allen. Good morning. Uh, before I begin, I would like to ask that we go ahead and take this time to uh, recognize uh, our distinguished uh, visitors and guests, but also uh, begin our, our moment of silence. So at this time, we're going to go ahead and uh, do our moment of silence. Thank you. We, we gather today to commemorate a day etched in our collective memories, September 11th, a day that forever changed the course of history, a day of unimaginable sorrow and resilience. On this solemn anniversary, we honor the lives lost and the countless others affected by the tra tragic events of that fateful day. We remember the victims, their families, and the first responders who bravely faced danger to save lives. Their sacrifice is a testament to the enduring spirit of humanity. In the face of such immense loss, we witness the power of unity and compassion. As a nation, as a world, we came together to mourn, to support one another, and to rebuild the resilient and strength displayed in the aftermath of this tragedy are a source of inspiration and hope. Today, let us reflect on the lessons learned from September 11th. Let us remember the importance of empathy, understanding, and tolerance. Let us recommit ourselves to, re to building a world free of hatred, violence, and prejudice. As we honor the memory of those who perished, let us also celebrate the, the enduring spirit of human resilience. Let us strive to create a future where peace, justice, and compassion prevails. Thank you. So at this time, we're going to uh, lower the flag. Thank you, you may be seated. Thank you, Chief Allen, for those words. So it is my pleasure now to invite Pastor James Harper of First Presbyterian Church to the podium to share a few words of encouragement. And may we be lifted and sustained by his words on this solemn morning. Good morning. I'm so grateful to our 
County leadership for ensuring that we continue to have these Patriot Day celebrations and the privilege to participate in them. I think um, we owe that to ourselves, to this nation, to remember, remember the lives uh, that were lost, remember the heroism that was displayed that day, even at times at the cost of people's own lives. And remember that uh, people still carry the weight of that loss that day, some physically, some psychologically. It's, uh, it's changed things forever, as was said earlier. But there's also lessons to remember from that day. I remember distinctly just how united we were after that. Declarations that we were one America and people opening their doors to one another and creating a sense of unity that, I don't know, my estimation is we, we terribly need that kind of unity today and to see a restoration of that and perhaps in the remembering of that we can commit ourselves personally to living differently to living with that same kind of unity we once shared that transcended any of the things that normally uh, we think ought to divide us we recognize our commonality as brothers and sisters fellow citizens and humans of dignity uh, occupying the space together today I also remember for me personally, maybe people of faith, is that I'm extremely vulnerable. That the things I think can protect me in this world can't. That there are things that can happen that can turn my world upside down. And that I find strength in something greater than myself. And that, uh, that, that gives me hope because uh, I find my security in that. And perhaps you can give you a chance to reassess where you find your security and uh, your strength as well. Let me uh, pray for us as we uh, search for that strength and that security. God of grace and God of mercy, today we remember when those towers fell and the lives that were lost. We remember sitting in front of televisions and listening to stories about the shock that was occurring across this country. We remember the the despair, we remember the grief. We remember the numbness that overwhelmed us as we saw what unfolded in this time 23 years ago. God, and we ask that you would meet us and our continued impact by that event. We pray that you would give healing and patience to the survivors of those attacks who are still carrying physical and mental pain and those who were just impacted emotionally as well. 23 years seems like a long time, but when you walk through trauma, it can seem like just yesterday. So we pray for your continued healing for this nation. But we also remember with gratitude the heroes of that day. We remember the first responders, both the professionals and those who became first responders out of love for their neighbor. Remember how they rushed to help, how they guided people down stairwells, how they worked their best to bring about uh, safety and uh, to bring about healing for those who were wounded and who served with compassion, those who were uh, broken in spirit and broken in body. And that reminds us today how valuable our first responders are to every community, and we remember ours today in Douglas County. We thank you for the people who every day put their lives in danger in order to protect and serve others. And so we pray today for all of our first responders, for our medical personnel, for our law enforcement officers, firefighters, and all those who serve so faithfully, not knowing what a shift will bring on any given day. Protect them, strengthen them, and give them the rest they need to continue that work. But we wouldn't come today without realizing that we also need your protection in our future. We offer prayers on behalf of our country, our government, our president, our local leaders, everybody who's in a place to serve and to protect, and we pray that they would have all the wisdom necessary to ensure that that attack on the first 9-11 would never happen again. We pray for our nation now. We pray for the restoration 
of the kind of unity that we experienced after that terrorist attack. We're far from that today. In my estimation, we're worse off because of it. So we cry out to you and ask that you return us to be the kind of people who exhibited the goodness that day that emerged out of horror. And all the demonstrations of kindness and selflessness that led people to donate blood to churches and other religious organizations opening their door to offer respite and care for people, for people offering comfort to those they knew and those they'd never met. May we be that kind of people again today. We need that kind of heart in every citizen of this nation to treat each other with dignity and respect and love and grace despite anything that on the surface may divide us. There's much that should unite us. And Father, as we look to the greater ends of this world, we ask that you would bring an end to hatred. We pray that you'd bring an end to terror. We pray that you would bring an end to war. We pray that one day we would wake up and the newspapers and the, all the news outlets and media would declare that there is peace on this earth. God, may it be so. And may it be so quickly. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the hour i first believed when we've been there ten thousand years bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise from when we first begun Thank you for that beautiful rendition of Amazing Grace. And we thank Pastor Harper for centering us this morning um, and reminding us of un being united and reminding us of remembrance and honor for uh, our veterans, our first responders, those who run toward safety, a danger when we run away from it. So we thank you. I want to pause here and ask uh, our director, Katrina Harley, our E911 director, to come up and share a few words with us before we close out today. Good morning. Good morning. Tilt this up a little bit. In our work as public servants, we understand the weight that comes of being the lifeline for those in need. Today, we honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice, and we pledge to continue their legacy by serving with dedication, compassion, and commitment. Thank you.
And I'd like to pause here and take a moment to recognize and, and thank our elected and appointed officials who are here with us in attendance today. Of course, Madam Chair, Dr. Jones is here, Vice Chair Mark Alcarez, District 2 Commissioner Whitney Kenner Jones, I see Judge Adams in the audience, uh, Madam Clark Stenbridge, I see our DA in the audience. If I'm missing anyone, uh, would you stand to be recognized? Representative Kimberly New, thank you so much. And I've had a whole conversation with you <laughs> this morning. Thank you for being here. We appreciate the support you continually give to Douglas County. Uh, now I'd like to take just a few moments before we close out to ask Vice Chair Alcarez to come up and share a few words with us. I really don't know what else to say that has not already been said. The pastor said so many great things in regards to unity and how our country was at that time. Uh, I still, as I said last year, I, rem I remember exactly where I was this day so many years ago. But one thing I, I, that I found fascinating this morning is I do every time this year is I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I watch what happened on that day and I pray that we never forget. But I got to think about how many families' lives were disrupted on that day. And I heard on the news something that just really touched my heart was over the 300 and something firefighters that died that day, 80 of their kids turned right around and become firefighters. Become firefighters. And when they asked them, you know, what drove them to want to be a firefighter? They said it was the love that the family showed, the firefighter family showed to their family. And they wanted to show the same love and give back to their community what the community gave to their family after their parents passed. And I thought, what a blessing that was to have a community love families in such a horrific time. And I thought, what an inspiration that would be if our, all of our lives were like that today. A lot of families struggle with a lot of things and reuniting our families in our county, in our country, it shouldn't just be on a day like this. We should thrive for this every day. But I too, I'd, I would never wanna miss a moment to tell our first responders how much we appreciate them everything that you do for our county, everything that you do for our citizens, your compassion, and that you keep us safe. And I never want to forget our military that went and fought terrorism after 9-11. And those that lost their lives fighting terrorism, they gave the ultimate sacrifice so that today, many years later, that tragedy has not happened in our country again. So I ask that we please remember those families, and they still to this day are out there fighting to protect us. So I just wanted to take a moment to tell all of our first responders, thank you. Thank you for having the heart to serve our county. And thank you for that acknowledgement of our first responders and our, our veterans. Um, I know that we have many of our first responders in the audience, some of whom are already standing. Um, may I have our first responders, our veterans, those who serve with a servant's heart, would you please stand to be acknowledged? endless gratitude for all that you give continuously. We thank you. So as we conclude this program, let us leave here today with a renewed commitment to the values that define us as a compassionate and resilient nation. In the face of adversity, we have shown the world that we can come together, support one another, and emerge stronger. Let us not forget the sacrifices made by so many and the lessons learned from the events of September 11th, 2001. As we go our separate ways, may we continue to honor the memory of the many lives lost, but let us also strive for a future where the bonds of humanity are stronger than any force
that seeks to divide us. We thank you all for joining us here today. May we never forget, and may we always stand together as one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.